Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for this week's video, we are going to be making a spider. So I have made and I plan on making a variety of different spiders because spider making is actually one of my favorite things to do. Uh, so today we are going to take on a pretty challenging spider, which is the Sydney funnel web spider. So uh, what makes this spider challenging as far as projects go is because it has uh, a lot of different consistencies going on. So you have a body that is partly matte, a body that is partly shiny, um, parts of it that are hairless, parts of it that do have fibers on it. So all of those contribute to a complicated build, but a really rewarding one all the same. So uh, let's get into it and I will narrate as we go. So let's get started. So to start this project, we are measuring out about 11 inch pieces of crafting and sculpting wire. This is the same wire that we use for the Huggy Wuggy project. I'm also using a crafting ornament for the abdomen. I um, typically use a ball of aluminum foil because it's light, but since I had those extra and I decided not to waste them, I used them for this project. So we are flattening some polymer clay and I'm going to be wrapping that around the ornament to form that abdomen. Be sure to leave yourself some extra clay at his, for lack of a better word, booty. Um, the Sydney Funnel Web has some pretty impressive spinnerets, almost finger-like, so you want to make sure that you leave plenty of space back there in order to form the spinnerets. And here, once again, I'm using um, rubbing alcohol to smooth out my edges for the clay. Rubbing alcohol is a wonderful thing. It thins out your clay, it gets rid of bumps, and I always have some on hand when I am sculpting. With that done, we're gonna move on to the legs. I'm taking a strand of the polymer clay and flattening it out, so that way I can add the wire to add the detail to the legs. A couple fun facts about this particular spider. They have massive fangs loaded with a neurotoxin component that attacks the human nervous system and in worst cases causes death. Though it's worth noting that there have been no fatalities since the introduction of the antivenom. And even though the one we're making is a bit bigger than your typical funnel web, there was a Sydney funnel web spider named Big Boy at the Australian Reptile Park that measured 10 centimeters stretched out, with fangs capable of piercing fingernails. Native to Australia, they burrow in sheltered sites under logs and rocks where they can find a cool and humid climate. Okay, so quick update. Um, before I dive back into this, I just wanted to show what I did. So we've got our part of our abdomen here. 
and then um, I went ahead and formed the feelers. The feelers are about half the size of the standard leg. And then I went ahead and made the rest of the legs. And this is just aluminum foil that I folded and wrapped around them to keep them intact. Um, we're going to start forming the actual structure of the spider and binding it together. Um, so yeah, uh, we've just got a couple more polymer clay sessions and then we'll be able to move on to some of the more aesthetic parts, which is the fun part. I'm so excited for that. Uh, so I've got my cup of tea ready and I'm wearing my uh, cable stitch cardigan, which makes me feel like I'm in a Hallmark movie where I'm searching for somebody who I know is missing, but I accidentally fall in love and uh, I'm ready to get to work. So. So using pieces of polymer clay, we're not only binding the feelers and the legs together, but we're also going to start forming the fangs. We're going to build up polymer clay in two sections there in the front near the feelers, and then we're going to add some wire to give them a sharp look. Anybody seen Labyrinth? We're helping hands! Which way? Up or down? <laughs> So once you have your build at the point where you're done with the polymer clay, uh, your, your spider is going to be very uh, fragile, so don't bend it or anything. But at that point, you need to start adding the different layers to make it work. So when it comes to the various creatures that I make, if it's not fully posable, I don't think it's a success to me. So when we're thinking about that, the first layer we're going to add over that polymer clay is going to be floral tape. This is my favorite stuff when it comes to building. Floral tape is great. It adds a flexibility to your creature, but it is extremely sticky. So when you're using this stuff, I tend to use gloves because um, if you're going to be doing anything else in the day, you are going to stick to everything. So get some gloves and start wrapping the sucker in floral tape.
then once you get that floral tape on there, you're going to seal it with everybody's favorite crafting medium, Mod Podge. I use a ton of this stuff, so when I buy it, I buy it on sale and I buy the big old jugs of it. So I always have Mod Podge floating around. For the body, you're going to want to use a layer of liquid latex. We only use this for the body. And the reason being is because uh, if you put this on the legs and you plan on posing the spider, it is going to rip apart that latex. Latex is great for adding, adding a, a nice realistic look to something if we want skin. But if you are going to be using it on an appendage that is something that you're going to be moving, it will tear up. So just the body. And now we're getting to my favorite part, which is painting. Now again, what things are going to look like when they dry is very important. So I would limit yourself to about three or four colors. Like you're really only going to need four colors. You're going to need a brown, a black, a white, and a red. That's it. Because if you give yourself too many colors, you're going to confuse yourself and you're going to get frustrated. So just limit your colors and make sure that they are a matte black or, or matte colors because you don't, you want to control where that shine is. You don't want the paint to be shiny in places that it's not supposed to be because we're going to be adding gloss later. And then once we're done with painting, we're going to seal it with a finish. Now this finish is a gloss finish. This is what I'm talking about. So I want to control where the shine is on the spider to make it more realistic. So when I show off a spider that I've made that is primarily um, paint, a lot of people ask me the same questions. The first one is, oh my goodness, what is it made of? And I tell them, well, it's clay and wire and a bunch of other crafting materials. And then the second one is, how do you get it to look like that? And I say the same thing every time somebody asks me that question, that there's really no magic to it. You just sit down with a few paints and um, sit down with some paint brushes and some water and you just keep working at it and you keep working at it and shading and adding colors and doing things until you're happy with it. And if you are getting frustrated with it, if it's not looking the way you want or you don't like something that you just did, then walk away from it. There's there's no timeline here. You just walk away from it, give it a day or, you know, maybe an hour if you just need to come back to it and then come back with a fresh set of eyes, get a snack, <laughs> I don't know, and you'll be surprised at what you're capable of and how it will look. So be patient with yourself and be kind with yourself because you will always get better the more you do things. I have a huge list of 
different creatures and creepy crawlies that I enjoy making or that I want to make. So if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments section. Is there something in particular that you would like to see me try? Because I'm always open to suggestion. It never hurts to have a reference picture nearby when you're painting. Something noteworthy about the Sydney funnel web is that the abdomen is almost like a dark gray instead of a black. And so I mixed it and I tried to blend it in with the black body. So um, the eyes are something that I really thought I would explain in front of a camera instead of try to show it to you while I'm doing it on the spider because everything's so dark right now and it would be very hard for you to see what I'm doing. So when it comes to eyes of the animals and the insects that I make, I have quite a collection of them that I've gotten from various craft stores and bead stores and uh, I keep them in little containers. Sometimes I label them like uh, eyes for little spiders, eyes for big spiders, things like that. Um, but they're beads. So when I'm applying them, I use like a, a super glue, like a Gorilla Glue, and I use a toothpick to apply the glue in the very limited area that I want it. And then I take a sewing needle and I put the beads on the sewing needle and I place them where I want them. And then once they're on there, I just take the sewing needle and I move the eyes in various ways because different spiders have different eye placements. So um, that is a really convenient way to do little tedious things and have it look uh, really good as a result. So that's my method. After you've put your eyes on, the last step to the Sydney Funnel Web Spider is it does have a little bit of fur on its legs. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking Mod Podge and taking some faux fur and adding it to the two joints on the legs to give it that texture I want. And here he is. I'm super excited with how he turned out. Um, so like I said, this is a uh, modeled after the Sydney Funnel Whip Spider. He is fully poseable. And kind of beady little eyes. And he's just so cute. So um, like I said, I have tons of fun making spiders. Uh, I make all sorts of types and I will absolutely 
um, show you how I make all of them here on my channel. So if you liked this video and you want to see me make more things, please subscribe. I do plan on making a vampire bat next, so that'll be tons of fun. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Is that your piggy? Is that your piggy?